Hey everyone. Today we are going to be doing a review of the uh, Vertex Assault 2.0 gloves. Um, as a quick sort of point by point, my normal grading scale, I look at a couple of things for gloves. Um, I look at dexterity, I look at durability, I look at uh, specifically the thinnier web space, which if you don't remember, I've talked about before, but that's the thinnier web space on your normal on your hand is this piece of flesh right here. So that particular test talks about, that I do talks about how much space is between the thinnier web space and the actual that portion of the glove. Um, general comfort and then overall ergonomics. Um, so first things first, uh, these do these are touchscreen enabled and they work. They're passable. That's like the only positive on these gloves. I am not a fan of these gloves. In fact, just like with the Big Toast Leo gloves, I'm probably going to chuck them right in the uh, garbage right when I'm done with this review. Um, so let's get into some of the more nitty gritty stuff here. So first and foremost, sizing just feels incorrect. Um, I wear... Usually on the next to skin tactical type gloves, I wear an XL. There's a lot of pinching. Like when I close my hand, there's pinching in the forefinger and the middle finger. There's pinching in the thumb. And even when you get into some of the firearm uh, utilization in a little bit, which I'll, I'll show in a little bit, that like a lot of the dexterity combined with the thinnier web space issue creates just a very unusable glove. There's also, I don't know if you can see this, but the stitching is not the same <laughs> like there's i don't know if it's production error or what but that index finger specifically has a weird like you know folding over of the actual material and then stitching in and that creates actually so there's probably like i don't know a fifth of an inch of material at the tip of the index finger just on the right hand not on the left hand <laughs> that uh, is just material. That's, I mean, that's a pretty bad production error, um, in, in my opinion. Uh, despite the fact that, I don't know if you can tell, but the back of the glove appears to be made of some sort of cotton material, you would think that'd be breathable, but it isn't. Um, I wore these once over the summer uh, on an outdoor excursion, and... Um, I'll get into more of this in a little bit, but it, it caused some significant problems where I ended up just taking them off completely, not using them for the rest of the weekend and um, using like going back to one of my my go to pairs of uh, pig gloves. So diving into that issue that I mentioned a little bit, the lack of the um, breathability caused my hands to swell, which was a pretty big problem. Um, that normally wouldn't be as big of an issue in most gloves, but combined with the already weird, like, sizing issue, um, that created some serious discomfort. But the worst part of it, uh, the seam along here where the back of the hand material meets the underhand material, which is like a leather pleather type material, along pretty much from the... Uh, like pretty much from the pip joint to the mip joint. Um, and then there's a, if you can see, there's a cut there. Actually, I'll take this off first. So from the pip joint to the mip joint, right, um, there is one piece of material there. Then on the thinnier web space, there's a, an additional piece of leather material that folds out from that folds over the back a little bit from the underside of the glove. And then the dual layer leather material goes all the way up the thumb. Now what ha what this caused was when my when my hand started to swell a little bit, it caused after just a few minutes, it caused severe pressure on that entire part of my index finger and my thumb. There are nerves that go along there that um, are critical nerves for sense of feel. And what happened was uh, within 
a few minutes, probably five minutes, my hand ended up going numb. Like just completely, like, like not just this part of it, my entire hand ended up going numb. And then it went into severe pain. So I took them off completely. I didn't even wear them for the rest of the weekend because it was that bad. Um, so the other thing, my thinnier web space on these gloves is about right there. So it's about as much material in between the tip of my finger and the you know tip of the actual glove here. Um, normally that wouldn't be a big problem, but this leather material is incredibly rigid, incredibly rigid. So if you try to grip a firearm with it, um, that becomes a problem. In fact, bring this guy out, empty, empty. So I can get a better grip on this than with the Leo gloves, admittedly, but there's still, like, so if, if you watch the Leo glove review, there is still um, some level of, it's not as bad, I do have more mobility in my finger, but there is some level of, like, pressure where the index finger clicks over. Um, I can still, in general, grab it, but I'm not going to be able to do more dexterous things with it, as well as some other gloves that I have. I mean, I can still get pretty good sight alignment, sight picture, trigger control, but it's still not, it's not a good pair of gloves specifically for that. In fact, so if you can see, there's a fair amount of material there as well. That causes some significant issues. So if, like, I'm very much dominantly right-handed. So you try to get the slide lock, takes a couple of tries with this particular pair of gloves. Not a fan of that. Um, so I talked about the dexterity a little bit. I go into some of this in more detail in the written review, which if you're interested in the real nitty gritty, I do suggest watching that. Um, overall, just the dexterity, especially when trying to, you know, function with any sort of like more, more, uh, uh, you know, like more fine motor movements, you're, you're really not going to be able to like, you know, it just, I don't know. It's, it's, there's a lot of pinching, a lot of non, a lot of, uh, you know, tightness and whatnot. Um, it just doesn't, it just doesn't really pass the buck on that. Um, Having said that, now I, I wasn't able to put these through the ringer like I do with most gloves, like with true a true dexterity torture test, simply because that pain issue made it so anytime I wanted to wear these outside, outdoors, it just, it wasn't going to happen. So um, I didn't really test that ad nauseum, but uh, in general, Vertex gloves are decent for that. I've had a few pairs of them. In fact, I'll be doing another pair, another review on another pair of them soon. Um... But uh, all in all, it just like, so these retail for 50 bucks, 49.99 USD. Um, well, it doesn't have as much of a problem with the imperatives of you know, tactical shooting um, and impeding them as like the Leo gloves did. They're still not ideal for any sort of shooting or tactical, you know, usage. Um, one thing I will say about them uh, is, or sorry, the the thing that I was going to get to about like them being 50 bucks, honestly, um, if you do, if you spend a little bit more money and you really set on a pair of Vertex gloves, um, I would suggest getting the Course of Fire gloves. I have a review on those incoming and those are vastly superior and they're just a few dollars more, honestly per pair. Um, I feel like Vertex really dropped the ball in these gloves, which is funny because I had the first, the first version, the first generation of the Assaulter gloves. Um, and those were great gloves. They fell apart pretty fast after heavy use, but, uh, all around those were great gloves and these being their like successor, just really, I feel like dropped the ball. Like they're just not really good gloves. So that's the review on the, um, Vertex Assaulter 2.0 gloves or Vertex Assault 2.0 gloves, rather. Um, 
I would suggest reading my written review. I go into, like I said, a lot more like technical details on things. But uh, yeah, that's a quick overview of the review. Uh, let me know what you think, and um, I'll see you in the next one.